I'm in the beginning stages of installing an inverter in my truck camper. Back here I have a couple of sticks of heat shrink. This has adhesive in it so as you heat it up that glue melts and makes a nice tight seal around everything. I have my Temco TH005 hydraulic crimp tool. And I've got an assortment of terminal lugs for my cable, and then I have a short piece of cable. This is a piece of 2 aught cable that's about a foot and a half long, and something that I learned a long time ago when I worked at a large inverter manufacturer, that when you create your battery cables, what you first want to do is lay out the cable, figure out where it's going to connect at each end, and see how the cable is going to be routed. In my case, the cable is going to be routed just like that. My inverter connection is going to be up here, and then over at this side will be my large uh, 300 amp fuse. So what we want to do here is crimp this lug on in that orientation, and then my other lug is going to be oriented the opposite direction. I will have it crimped on like this instead of like that. Be sure to stay tuned to the end of the video and I show exactly why I wanted these two terminal ends offset from each other. So first thing I'll do is a sharp utility knife. It uh, does seem to be cutting fairly well so I'll go ahead and use this blade. I thought about changing the blade first but it looks like it's going to cut okay. There are special tools made for stripping heavy-duty welding cable. I don't have one of those tools, so I just use a utility knife. And this has a cellophane inner wrapper. We also need to get that out of there. and get all of our strands tucked inside. And now it's ready for crimping. And I actually have the wrong terminal lug on there. I want this one with the 5 16 hole. And I'll get my tool ready to use. And I pulled out my dies for 2 aught cable. I'll go ahead and slide those in. And what I typically do here is tighten this just a little bit. And that's a little bit too tight. Okay, loosen it back up and then carefully hold everything in place. And orient it so my cable is laying exactly how I wanted it to. And I'll look at the other side of my lug and we are pretty well centered on the on the barrel. I usually do this on the floor so I can get a lot of pressure on it. I think this doing it on this works table might be okay, I'm not sure. I actually th think I will move on to the floor here of my shop. And here's how it turned out. Then I'll grab a piece of heat shrink tubing, cut that to length, slide it in place.
And there we have it. That's one end accomplished. You can see how this end is all frayed and nasty looking. I need to start with a fresh end. So I'll get my cable cutters and cut that off about right there. We'll just apply pressure until we can't apply anymore. This works better doing it on a really stiff workbench or on the floor rather than on this flexible desk. cable came out exactly how I wanted it to. The two terminal ends are offset. So this shows why I wanted to have my two terminal lugs offset from each other. So here we are like that. That was a natural orientation for the cable going through the hole. And then over here on my fuse, see this is AC wiring for my transfer switch. I want to have this cable situated as low as possible so that wiring goes over it. So that's why I mounted this one essentially upside down so that offsets the cable and push, points, pushes the cable down below the surface of the fuse. It just gives more clearance for the wire routing over the top of this cable.